Hello and welcome. This is James from the DSO Imagery Channel. Tonight I'm going to show the processing workflow I used on my latest shot of the Horsehead and Flame Nebula. Now what you're seeing here is a shot that I took last year with a 70 millimeter refracting telescope, the Stellar View SV70T, and I also used the uh, ASI 533MC Pro for this. So this is a one-shot color camera. Uh, I don't remember how many hours on this. I think I did a video uh, on the workflow of this particular picture. So if you look back about a year ago, you, you should find it. Uh, this year, I decided to uh, go with narrow band, and I used my 115 millimeter refractor, the AT115 EDT. Now, I had been resisting uh, Im imaging this target with that uh, telescope because the camera that I have with that telescope and that whole imaging system is pretty sensitive to bright stars and um, halos and this is despite running Astrodon narrowband filters. Now I've kind of had a little saying in regards to our friend here Alnitak. Uh, I like to say that Alnitak has been ruining astrophotography since 1888. <laughs> and the reason why I say 1888 is that is the year this region uh, was first imaged with a uh, with a, a glass plate. In fact, uh, I've got it right up here. <laughs> and so, I mean, look look at this halo. It's ridiculous how how bright this halo. Uh, Horsehead was discovered by uh, Wil Wilmina Wilmania Fleming. She's the uh, astronomer that took that picture, uh, this shot right here. And uh, this, I believe, yeah, that's the telescope that was used. <laughs> All right, so I actually downloaded a copy of this picture just to see <laughs> how bad that halo is. I mean, it's completely obscuring the flame nebula. So all the attack has been a thorn in every astrophotographer's side from the very beginning. I think this one managed it fairly well, but you're going to see this, uh, uh, even in narrow band, the halo was really bad. Now the other thing about the circumstances around me imaging this target this, this time around is that uh, we, had, we were in the midst of a moon cycle, right? So bright moon, 80% or larger, including the full moon. So I it was clear. It's so hard not to image when it's a clear night, even when that dang moon is out there in full blast. So uh, I needed a brightish target anyway, and I figured, you know what, let's just go narrow band on this and see how we do. Uh, oh, and really quick, let me bring this over. Yep, I am currently imaging. It is clear out right now. Uh, this is the sequence for it. So not even as uh, deep as I typically go, uh, but you can see here, so O3HAS2. Um, the camera is the ZWO ASI 1600 Mono. This is riding on a Skywatcher EQ6 R Pro. No, yeah, R Pro. And um, the filters, as I mentioned before, are Astrodon 5 nanometer HAS2 and O3. Now with the O3, I did try to get most of this O3 data before the moon would rise. So there's not a whole lot of moon in the O3 data. The S2 and the HA bore the brunt of the moon. Now what you're seeing here is the S2 data. Uh, so we are getting a bit of a halo here, but it's not too bad. We're getting this classic diffraction uh, uh, artifact from the ASI 1600 uh, camera sensor itself, you know, that sensor is pretty old. I think it's like 12 years old by now, but it's still a pretty darn good sensor. Uh, but for whatever reason, it didn't have an AR coding on it. And that's why this sensor gets these weird diffraction artifacts. Uh, but other than that, I mean, we're looking pretty good. So this is this is unprocessed, just the stack right out of uh, Pix and Sight for stacking. Flame Nebula looks great. And uh, everyone's favorite, the horse head right there. So not bad detail of uh, 644 millimeters with the uh, 0.8 reducer on this refractor. Take a look at the HA. HA is always very nice and clean. 
not much of a halo here. I mean, all the text a blue star, right? So it makes sense that we wouldn't get much of a halo in the red. So HA, as always, looking amazing. And here we go, the O3. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that that halo is nuts. And we're even getting reflections all around the periphery here. You can barely see the flame nebula. I mean, now there's not a lot of O3 in this area anyway. You can barely make out the horse head. But, uh, yeah. So, I knew I was going to have my work cut out for me on this one. If you look in there, there's, there's double uh, halos, and they're not symmetrical. Now, I've done a narrowband shot before on that Stellarview SV-70T with the ASI 1600 Mono, and the reflection wasn't nearly as bad. I mean, it was big, but it was more centered and... Um, and it, the halo was easier to deal with. In fact, I did a review of the ASI 1600 Mono, uh, I think about 18 months ago or so. If you're interested in seeing that video, you can check that video out. But in that video, I did go over the narrow band shot uh, with, with the 70 millimeter scope. And I show the mass that I use to deal with the halo. This time around, it was a lot more difficult. I kind of ignored these. After doing the channel combination, these really faint ones really weren't visible so I didn't have to worry about that I just had to fight with this ugly monstrosity now uh, Pix and Sight does an auto crop and it all the images are registered so I didn't have to do any of any of that so the very first thing I did was a channel combination and this is what I got and I mean looking at this right off the bat the halo doesn't look too terrible here notice you can't see any of these halos uh, but a, as I work the curves and increase contrast the halo became more evident all right so i ran dynamic background extraction let's see and then here i think what you're seeing is blur exterminator yep the stars were already pretty tight so i didn't feel like i needed to dial the stars in tighter but Blur Exterminator did a great job on this uh, Flame Nebula. So there, there's the before and the after, so pretty good. And uh, then I took the stars out. And so now with the stars out of the picture, and by the way, it's still unprocessed, uh, with the stars out of the picture, now we're getting to see a little bit better of what this halo is looking like. And my plan of attack, I tried a couple of different ways to do this, but basically what I ended up doing was creating a mask and then using curves to pull back on the blue, basically, to try to minimize this. And then this guy here in the middle, you'll see it further along in the uh, workflow, but... I, after trying to make a mask, I've had success in the past by making a mask out of this specific, this uh, geometric type shape using range mask. Uh, but this time I just use the uh, healing brush in, um, in Photoshop. In one of my previous videos, somebody uh, recommended trying uh, the, um, oh, the uh, content aware uh, fill. And I did try that, but it, it created too many artifacts in the place and it, where this artifact was. And while, I mean, realistically, this all the attacks going back in, and so it'll, it'll cover up any artifact that was in there. I think the healing brush did a, at least in this instance, did a, a cleaner job. So that's the route that I went. All right, so I used GHS, Generalized Hyperbolic Stretch, to do the stretch. And uh, this is it right there. Actually, you know what? I'm not sure. I may have just used uh, STF tool. You know, usually with narrowband, uh, the F STF tool auto stretch does a good enough job. Yeah, I think that I think I just went with the STF auto stretch in this case and applied it. 
All right, so once I had stretched this, I actually took it just like this in the Photoshop and hit it with um, the camera raw filter. I just find the sliders in the camera raw filter are easier to do some quick uh, adjustments. Uh, the main sliders that I'm using is the dehaze and the clarity. And here you can see the results. I didn't do anything with color or exposure or anything like that. I was going to stick with uh, PixInsight for that. There. Now, you see what I did? Uh, let's see. There's the uh, the uh, mask. And I used the um, game script to create this mask. Usually I use range mask. I think I did game script this time. To be honest, you can see some of them here. I tried all different methods. This um, this halo was really difficult to get a good clean match. So you can see that there's a faint outline. I didn't quite get it, but uh, this is where I was at. And there you see another application. So we're still getting some artifacts from that halo left, but it's um, it's not bad. It's not it's not as noticeable now. And now some more curves work, just general curves work. We're doing an inverse to subtract green. Uh, see, right? So I'm wanting to get rid of the purple in here, including the, the purple that's in here. So we invert the image. The inverse of purple is green. And then we use SCNR tool to subtract green from the image. And there. So the purple's gone. And we actually got some nice blues in the place of some of these purple spots. Alrighty, so let's keep going. I think this is just a clone that I was doing something with. Um, yeah, okay, so you see this? This is a SCNR tool now, just to dial back some of this green in the overall image. Now, if you're one of my regulars, you know I do like to keep some green in my um, in my uh, narrowband images, my SHO images, and my goal is to kind of keep the green isolated to here. And so there we go. We have a mask on there. And I'm just, my, my, my thinking for this image is mostly golds and yellows with some green, and we have some nice blue here on the edge. And so all this work here is uh, done with curves. Uh, we're inverting again. So I still, there's still some green noise in here. Or no, well it would be purple, right? I think it's purple that I was getting rid of. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. So I guess after messing with the curves and increasing saturation of back, I bought some magenta back in there. So there, got rid of it. Alrighty, so that was pretty much it. I decided to do some work on the stars at this point and really the stars. Um, I did a, try to do a couple things here. Uh, what you're seeing here is that I put a mask over all the attack because I wanted to bring out the rest of these stars without all the attack getting too big. Um, now these are narrow band stars. It's been a topic uh, recently elsewhere. Uh, the way I handle narrow band stars is I invert, subtract green. Well, so actually I skipped a step. All right. So first I do SCNR to kill the green, right? So we got, oops, we have some green stars in there. So SCNR tool takes care of that. Uh, now we have magenta or purple stars. So we invert, subtract green again, put it back. That took care of the green. Uh, and then what I'll typically do is boost saturation uh, to put some color back into these stars. All right, so I got to this stage and combined the images just to get an idea and see that diffraction pattern is still there. I mean, it's just 
brutal. <laughs> so I took the starless image back into Photoshop and I hit it with, um, where are we, this one? There we go. I hit it with uh, Healing Brush. So you can even see some artifacts right from the tool. And the shape of this stuff in here, this is all artifacts. This isn't real, but I figure it's not an issue since this, all the tacks going back in there. And this ring, I could have maybe done a little bit to remove this ring, but it almost kind of looks like a, a reflection or a, a ring around the star. So I decided to leave it and see how it would look. And uh, I think I ended up with this one. Yeah, so this is what ended up being the final image. So, uh, you know, I think it's okay. I don't it's, I don't consider it one of my better images. I mean, it was really kind of a, I, I knew going in the, the um, with this image train that the halo was gonna be really bad. And then imaging this with a full or near full moon, uh, I knew there was gonna be uh, limits to how good this image could be. But I think it turned out all right. I like the colors uh, that I managed with this one. It may be too yellow for most people. I know reds and oranges are more popular, but I think for this target, this works out pretty well. This will certainly not be the last time I image the uh, horse head in flame. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so let me know what you guys think. Let me know, uh, drop a comment in the video and let me know if you shot this target this season and uh, if you went narrow band, broadband. Uh, if you guys have links to your images, drop them in the comments. Now, the one thing with dropping links in the comments, I have uh, that set to automatically uh, block, but it goes into a bucket where I can manually um, uh, permit the links. It basically, I have this set so those uh, spammers can't drop those uh, links to viruses and whatnot in the comments. So if you post a link to your image and you don't see your comment right away, just give it a little bit. When I log on, I'll, I'll get the notification and uh, I'll look at your picture and um, approve the link. Also, let me know what you guys do when you have a full moon out. A clear night with the full moon. What kind of targets do you focus on? What's your strategy for dealing with that full moon? Uh, with some of my other scopes, I shot some star clusters, so maybe I'll share those in a future video. Uh, full moons are always a good time to um, get a hang of uh, hardware issues, tracking issues, collimation, uh, recording planets, right? Jupiter and Saturn don't care about the moon, although they weren't in an ideal position for this latest full moon. But yeah, anyway, let me know what you guys do, and um, everyone have um, uh, a good evening. Clear skies.